All right, there it is. I know, uh, man, I had a tough decision on making the purchase to buy this truck. Let me just tell you what it is. GMC Canyon 2017. I wanted the stripped down model, no options. I started doing this uh, truck research because I thought I could buy one for 18,000. I paid $23,900 plus tax for this truck. After I got looking into it, the $19,000 trucks with the extended cab, they only uh, had no back seat. So you had to get the work truck package, which included the back seat, included carpet and cloth. If you ordered it, I think you could have got vinyl, but most of them had cloth. Well, that jumped up in the 20 some thousand dollar range. Bought this truck here next to St. Louis, and I'm from Indiana, and my dad worked for GM. I get GM discount. I bought it from Brendan over there at Laura Buick GMC. They sell more of these trucks than anybody in the nation, he told me. The number two largest GM dealer, but if they sold three lines, they would be the largest. So I recommend it's worth a drive. It was almost five hours. I hauled it with Big Black and on that trailer. So, uh, basically, four-cylinder, it does have an upgraded radio, and it has a differential lock. And I think it has a work truck package. Well, let's just find out. Let's grab the window sticker. Basically, it has... Uh, let's see here. Where am I at? Convenience package. Keyless entry, cruise control, $590. Easy tailgate, which I really don't care about. Okay, silver, that was $395. Upgraded radio, $375, which is this radio, which I really don't care for because I try to turn the volume up all the time with that button. But it's that button. Backup camera. I do like locking differential, four tens. It needs it, trust me, it's a four cylinder. How's it run? How's it drive? Man, I'm telling you, I do have a front leveling kit, and I did put super springs on the back, and I put a block in it, the rear, but it rides like a log wagon. It rides good on smooth roads, but you get on cornfield roads like I live, it beats your brains out. So this thing rides and drives like a Cadillac. Uh, you know what I like about it? Cause I can lean over the truck like this. I can reach down in the bed. It, it's awesome. What's weird is it came with a hitch. I mean, it pretty much looked identical to this, but did not have a receiver built into it. Just held the bumper up. So I had to buy that on Amazon. It was a hundred bucks. That plug there was 50, but believe it or not, I'm not getting down this gravel cause I just shuffled it around but it comes with all the wires from the factory. But I had to connect them all with those, connect it all with those packs, grease packed fittings. You could have heat shrink taped it and all that stuff, but it's grease packed. It works great. Uh, man, two wheel drive, four cylinder. That was a rare option. How's it drive? It drives great. Does it need more power? Not when you have that. Now, if you're buying crew cab, it was $2,000, I think, over the extended cab. I got two kids, worth it. Lever. Yeah, see, it's a two hand thing. Let me set the phone down. Okay, another thing you just can't get anywhere else unless you get YouTube nice little story to put a super strap in there I don't know why man it's an awesome truck drives good the radios decent I just can't get over the ride this little guy corn pro it's a narrow trailer you can see around it with the mirrors I pulled it with that four-cylinder how'd it do did just fine we live in Indiana. There's no mountain ranges. There's no hills per se. If there is, 
go another mile and it'll be flat. So it pulled that trailer no problem. Torsion axle trailer, I believe. So once you get it level, there's not a whole lot of tongue weight, but it is a pretty heavy trailer. I think that trailer weighs 4,500 pounds. Uh, don't see the weight anywhere on this trailer, but there's a VIN. I do like those little LED lights on it or whatever those are. Uh, I just washed it for the first time. I got 1,800 miles on it in one wash. A cool little deal, which my Dodge has, which I guess maybe all new vehicles are going to. No gas cap. And I guess if you get a diesel and you got urea, probably goes there maybe. I don't know. Come standard with the power seat. Yes, it is dirty. We've had fare this week. And the old lady left the... Well, that was me. Shoot. Now I gotta clean that up. Alright. I think we're in second gear here taking off. I don't know if you can see in the mirror, but that trailer is a lot bigger than the truck. So, it takes a little bit to get it going. Let's just set the cruise here. Pump it up. Now this trailer weighs 4,500 pounds, I think. Weighs more than the truck. Four cylinder, two wheel drive, base model. I don't know if it's going to shift into fifth gear with the cruise on. There it goes. All right, we're back in it. Sun's coming down, so let's uh, put it in reverse. Pretty quick, pretty good camera. Like I said, you can see all around, but the weird thing is, oh yeah, there you go. Turn the wheel. I could run over my concrete form and aim right for the old lady's car. There you can see the ball. What's going on here? Put it in drive, go forward. The camera stays on for a few seconds so if you're trying to hook up stays going but yeah i've been pulling a trailer and i've been running the dog crap out of it uh, been getting about 20 point 20 miles per gallon and i have been pulling the corn pro and i have been going back forth fair but uh, over the life of the vehicle i think i've averaged 25 miles per gallon all right i'm gonna show you another bonehead move that they did it's not there but the air dam hung down like if you look at every truck and there's a million videos it hang down annoying so what i had to do is remove uh let's see that bolt there there's three across the inner fender and then there's a support bracket plastic of course all the same t15 Anyways, it took me about an hour and a half to get the air dam off because you got to undo the fender, fender on each side, jack it up, get them out. And there's actually two in the center that on a GMC, I couldn't get to. Maybe if it's four-wheel drive and had tow hooks, you might be able to access it, but I could not on a two-wheel drive without taking more shit loose. So I, I just ripped it loose. Uh... About a mile from home here is a rough bridge, smooth as silk. So I can't tell if you can see that because it's so rough. But I'm getting about 30 some miles to gallon. And 
that I am cruising 51 mile an hour. Just smooth as silk. Drop it down and low. So you got the shifters. Six. If any of you guys are thinking about doing any towing with a canyon, truck is setting, uh, I'd say pretty level. Now that there is a heavy trailer. Uh, don't know what it weighs, 4,500 pounds maybe. We can go weigh it here in a little bit. I know the truck weighs about 42. But four cylinder, two wheel drive, does great. Just a base model. A lot wider, but you can still see around it. You can see the mirror. Well, it's a 90 degree day in July. Trucks are running good, staying cool. Alright, we got on the interstate. I just happened to be coming down a hill, but I got it to go into fifth gear and we're going a little faster and it's actually I'm slowly picking up speed. Now it's locked in fifth gear. I'm going to even have to let off of it here, the car in front of me. But, like I said, this, this little four-cylinder, I've never drove the V6, but there, it's, I had to let, really let off of it now, it downshifted into probably six, and ain't going to be able to maintain that there back into fifth. Now, I'm baby in the throttle. I'm being very, very gentle. It's hard to drive and look at where you're going and make sure this screens. See, and you let off of just a little bit, it, it wants to go into six gear. Like I said, it's, we're slowly losing speed because I got a car in front of me, but Give it a little bit more juice. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it don't do bad. I probably got the wind in my favor for some reason. All right, so doing a little tow test here. Pulling a nice, fresh, cold air out there, 29 degrees. Now, this trailer weighs uh, 3,000 pounds, and it's not the trailer that's uh, heavy. It's that gate and the sides, tons of wind resistance. This is a 14K trailer, eight lug axles, you know, way too big. I don't even have a brake controller for this thing, but actually pulling the 3,000 pounds, it's, well, I guess I got a parachute slow me down back here on that gate, but it actually stops. I mean, it stops better than any of the old half tons I had, but I'm comparing a half ton from, you know, 90s half tons. So anyways, we'll just do a little video here. Taking off, this is a four cylinder, 410 gears. I mean, accelerates just fine. Then you start winding it out. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm starting to have cars pass me. It's right about there. So we're up to speed, doing just fine. But you see the fuel economy is down there around averaging 11. I just can't get it to shift. So let's get up to about 60. Now let's let off the throttle, see if I can get it to shift. Okay, 
because for some reason I gotta hit the up button. But I mean, really around town it does fine. It just, the faster you go, the, you know, the more wind resistance you got and it just ain't got enough torque. You know, I mean, it'll do it if you have the RPMs up high. But, you know, it's awful hard on it. But if you're not doing it every day, if you want, got one of these trucks like I do, I just drive it back and forth to work. I got a big Dodge Cummins. I mean, I would even tow 5,500 pounds with this thing. It just depends on the wind resistance and stuff like that. So I wish I had a calculation to calculate how much weight the air actually equivalents to. Because I got a Corn Pro 16 foot livestock trailer that's heavier than this. Or maybe about the same weight actually, but round front and it pulls so much easier.